Hey y'all doing some Memorial Day ribs, chicken, and pork loin. I'm going to show you the grill here. Uh, we got it set up for, we're going to have it set up for indirect heat. Got some apple wood and some cherry wood. I'll show you that. So we'll have this set up for indirect. We got a little bit of cherry wood, mostly apple wood for the, uh, we got pork, baby back ribs. We've got a pork loin that we're going to smoke and a young chicken. So get our heat deflectors wrapped in foil, put those in where temperatures coming up nice and slow. When you're smoking stuff, you don't want to bring your temperature up too quickly. So you want it nice and slow so it stays at that nice low temperature. So we got our temperature coming up nice and slow. We're about 175-ish right now. Uh, we got everything set up for indirect heat. Got the heat deflector plates in, wrapped in foil so they don't get all nasty. Uh, I would suggest that the drippings don't get your deflector plates nasty and the underside doesn't turn black. I think they'll last longer. I've got a second rack in here because I'm going to put a pork one up here later. Ribs. And I'll have a, a beer can chicken here. We'll get all that later, but we're going to get the ribs on. Show you that in a minute. All right, guys, I've got my ribs here rinsed, patted dry. I did peel the membrane off so it can get some of that smoke flavor, and it's not as tough when you go to eat it. Uh, I've got a sweet rib rub here, basically uh, kind of a Texas-style rib rub. Just a little bit of sugar, coarse salt, coarse pepper. Um, that's about it on there. There is a little bit of uh, paprika, a little bit of cayenne, and I've also got Dizzy Pig Barbecue Company Raging River Rub. It's a pork poultry rub. Uh, these are gluten free, no MSG. They're really, uh, really pretty good. All their rubs are. So I'm going to do a little bit of this, a little bit of the rib rub. Rub it with some mustard, and I'll throw it directly on the grates. Don't go too heavy on the mustard. I'll show you what I do here in a second. All right, so a little bit of mustard. You don't want a whole lot because you're just wanting the rub to stick. So a little bit of mustard. I got the sweet rib rub that I was telling you about. I'm just going to do a little bit of that because I am also have the Dizzy Pig barbecue rub. The Dizzy Pig, that one I have for poultry and pork, it's got a little citrus in it. It'll go good with the apple and the cherry wood that's in the smoker. Get a nice coating, it'll create a good bark on the ribs as they're, as they're smoking. All right, and I'll throw these on the smoker. All right, y'all, I'll get the uh, ribs just put on. We were right at 225. Of course, I had the lid open, so the temperature dropped a bit. Um, I'm going to close my daisy wheel up in a minute as soon as some of this smoke does die down. But uh, we do have a lot of apple wood in there and cherry wood, so it's going to have a good smoke flavor. Put the ribs directly on the rack. In about two hours, I'm going to wrap them up in foil and put them back in. And around then, I'll be putting a pork loin on and a chicken, and I'll show you that in a minute. I'll have another extension rack and all that. Uh, I did forget one thing. I forgot my little water pan. So I may have to finagle a little bit, get a water pan in there. But they say with the uh, ceramic cookers, especially this Primo, you don't need a water pan because that moisture will maintain in the ceramic. All right. Hey, also got it right at 250, right where I want it. Uh, it may fluctuate plus or minus 10, but that's okay. It shouldn't, it should maintain there. Got everything set, so I shouldn't have to mess with it. Daisy wheel about like that. And inlet door about like that. Just under a finger, maybe a pinky finger width. So pretty pretty small there. It'll maintain that 250. I'm gonna put some uh, digital thermometers on there. I was able to get my water pan in there. Had to lift this grate get it in there worked out fine easier if you do it beforehand 
I am going to add a beer to the water pan and I'll throw some water in there too. Add some good flavor to those, uh, to those ribs. And we'll add some water to that. Hey y'all, so I got my uh, beer can chicken here. Uh, I've got it on this little uh, roaster. found this on Amazon. Uh, let's see. Cameron's Deluxe. It can do a full size uh, chicken. Um, don't think it would be big enough for a turkey, but full size chicken. I've got just a young chicken right now. Got it on here. Uh, it does have a little uh, insert so you don't have to use the actual beer can. It has an insert that you pour the beer into. It takes about three quarters of the beer, so it's perfect. Uh, slathered it with some butter. Again, got my Dizzy Pig poultry uh, rub here. This is the Raging River Rub. Gonna put that on there. Nice citrus flavor to it and get it on the smoker. All right, y'all, sitting right at 250. Uh, again, there's the Daisy Wheel. Uh, got the pinky finger a little bit closer down there. Uh, got someone mowing over here. Anyway, just got the chicken on. Should be on for three to four hours at 250. Got the rub on there. Threw some onions, a little bit of garlic, and uh, some fresh green onions as well. I uh, had to uh, move apart the ribs, get that little tray in there. Our pork loin will be down there. Our ribs are going to be moved up here once we wrap them. Show you that in a bit. You got about three to four hours on that chicken. One more hour on the ribs, and we'll wrap them and do another three to four with the ribs wrapped. All right, guys, it's been about two hours for these ribs. Going to get them wrapped up. Going to put a little barbecue sauce on them. Nothing fancy, just some Stubbs barbecue sauce. Not a whole lot. Just to have some moisture and flavor in there. Uh, and then I'm going to put them back on the grill. Hey, y'all, still sitting. Just opened it. It's 250. Still got the day's wheel, everything the same. Had to kind of arrange everything here, but I've got my two racks of ribs. Got them wrapped up nice and tight so that pork loin doesn't leak all over them. Uh, got my chicken and veggies. And got the pork loin rubbed and directly on the grate. We're up at 250. Gonna step it up a little bit, but not much, maybe 275. We got about two, two and a half hours, maybe two on that pork loin, another two on the chicken. All right, guys, grill's still sitting at 250. Just checked. Pork loin on the thermopin. Right at 143 there, 144. We're gonna go ahead and pull it. It's gonna rest. We are done on the pork loin. Gonna check the chicken in a minute. That pork loin, 145, 144. That pork loin, it is done. We're gonna let it rest for 30 minutes. We'll slice it up. All right, guys, pull the ribs off. They are done. Looking really good. Got a nice bark on there. Now ribs are a little different. We got 196, 7, right at 200 there on the thermo 10, 201. This one, 195. Food safety standard is 190 to 200. So we're right there. You could probably do a little on the lower side, a little firmer. These are going to be fall off the bone. Good stuff. I'm gonna let those rest, cut them in a bit. So it's been 30 minutes rest time, cut into it. It's perfect, it's juicy. It's got a perfect smoke ring on it. Our ribs. Cut into our ribs here. They are fall apart, you don't really even need to cut them. It's got a good smoke ring on it. Flavor on the ribs. Mmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Our chicken will cut. 
here in about 10 minutes. Thanks for watching. So we've let the chicken rest for about 15, 20 minutes. It's perfect. Juicy. Ready to go. Tastes excellent. Good smoke flavor. Thanks for watching.